We need to make something that controls the puck. When you hit play currently, we have it spawning. The UFO is actually doing the spawning. It spawns within our range. That's great, but the pucks do not move. So inside of my scripts folder, I'm going to right click, create, C sharp script. I'm going to call it puck controller with a capital P and C. And then I'm going to drop this onto the puck. Uh, drag it onto there. There we go. And to make sure not only this one obeys it, but also all the prefabs that get spawned, I need to go to overrides, apply all. So that applies it to the prefab itself. Now I'm going to open up my puck controller script. And we know we want the puck to go in one of four directions, up, down, left, or right. And to let it choose that, we're going to make some variables, first of all. Uh, we need to know what the left and right borders are. Um, actually, we'll use a block. We're going to bounce off something, so we don't need those. Um, we're going to make an array. So an array is like a list of items, like a shopping list. And so before we just did like public int score, and we just made one thing stored in it. But if we do public int with square brackets, that means it's going to be a list. So public int array called direction and I'm gonna set the array I'm gonna put things on the list using curly braces uh, so I'm gonna do 0 1 2 and 3 uh, I started with 0 because that is actually position 0 1 2 and 3 um, just kind of a reminder to myself um, and then we're going to use that uh, to make it move in a specific direction. So I'm just creating a variable that we can use later. It's an integer called move direction. Um, and so we're going to get a random piece of this and store it in here. Okay. So when should it pick a direction? Well, as soon as it spawns and it should only pick that direction once, right? So where do you put something that should only be called once at the very beginning? In the void start. So my move direction is equal to, now if you don't know what to put here, we know we want it to be a random choice of this list. And so we can say, okay, is equal to from the direction array, now, for instance, if I put in two right here, move direction would be equal to the number two. I could do a debug log. I could run this debug dot log and say, quote, move direction is equal to, and then concatenate that with the actual variable value. Let's just go run that and see if it does, in fact, grab something from position. You know, I'm going to make this a 7 just to prove that it's grabbing from position 2. And let's go in here. Let's run this and go to our console. There we go. So it said move direction equals 7. So it pulled from position 2 and just debug logged it to the console. So we know this is working. However, we don't want to always be position or to always be position two. So change that back. What we want is a random choice of those. So inside of here, we can actually tell it, hey, pick a random number. Random dot range will do that. And in parentheses, you tell it uh, the starting point, which is zero. And then if you say up to three, it'll do zero, one, and two because the second digit is non-inclusive. So if you want zero, one, two, or three to be options, you actually need this to be a four, okay? Because this maximum is not included. It'll go up to, but not including. So zero through four is actually what we want. And now save it, run it. Look at all these choices, right? Uh, why is seven being picked? Oh, because I did not apply this. It, the override. Oh, no way. I shouldn't have went. Go here. Save this. Save this. Hold on. Uh, this overrides it. So I need to change it to two there. There we go. Apply all. And if we run that, 
<clears throat> these are all randomly picking 0, 1, 2, or 3. You can see all the choices happening there. Okay, back to the script. Now that we have that, um, in the update, we're going to tell it, hey, if... If you're moved, depending on your move direction, go ahead and translate that direction. So if uh, move direction is equal to, that's what two equals sign means. One equal actually changes something. It sets whatever's on the right into what's on the left. Double equals is checking if it's equal to it. So if it equals zero, oops, open squirrely braces, hit enter, uh, we're gonna, change its transform so transform dot translate which means slide in this direction now in parentheses we see we have all these different options and what we're going to be doing is basically uh, this one although it's vector 2 um, we're going to say transform dot up which is going to be well vertical up um, but in order to better control its speed, we should probably multiply this by something called like puck speed. But we don't have anything called puck speed yet, so we need to go create that variable. But um, <clears throat> and to make sure your speed is not dependent on frame rate, you always multiply by time dot delta time. Okay, you'll notice this is red because it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. So up here, we just need to declare, I'm going to make it public. Um, I'm going to make a public float so we can have decimals. Public float, we'll call it puck speed. And we're going to make that equal to 5.0f to indicate it's a float. Now let's test it. All of them that come up as zeros should go up. Uh oh. I forgot a semicolon. Oh no. This is why we put posters on the wall that say you forgot a semicolon. <laughs> Aha, look. The ones that sp that got uh, zero from that random range are, in fact, going up. That's a good sign. So now all we need to do is take that and make it for all of them. So this, this, this. So if your direction is one or two or three, three if it's one we're gonna say go to the right if it's two we're gonna say transform up but at a negative speed because there is no transform dot down and if it is three we're gonna do transform dot right because there is no left at a negative speed which would be the opposite of right so we'll save that go back to unity hit play and looky there, we're going in all four directions. Good stuff. Now, we need some way for these things to bounce off of the wall. So one way to do that is to actually give it something to run into. Uh, so I'm going to do assets, uh, create, sprites, square. And I'm going to call this wall. And I'm going to bring the wall into the scene. There's my my wall hanging out here. And uh, we're going to add uh, a rigid body to the, or a collider, excuse me. So a box collider 2D, add component box collider 2D. And I'm going to make this a trigger, which is kind of like a zone that you can walk into or walk through. So like when you walk into Meijer or Walmart and the door opens for you, you didn't bump into anything. You just ran into a trigger zone. So our box collider is actually now a trigger zone. Um, and I'm going to change this. I'll just go to the resizer thing. Make this a nice big wall. There we go. Plenty big. Um, Looks good. So now it's a trigger. And now I'm going to prefab this up. Uh, I'm going to drag it into my prefabs. And I'm going to duplicate that. Get my move tool. Just throw it over there. Control D that. 
change the Z at a 90. Roughly throw it in here. Duplicate that. Put it down here. I'm putting them a little outside there so I can actually see the uh, pucks are bouncing off of it. Um, then I'll tighten them in there to perfect the uh, area I want them to bounce off of. Got our walls. All four of them have box collider 2D with is trigger. So let's go into our script. The reason we used trigger is because, yes, we have void update, which, by the way, you can collapse these things if you want with a little minus sign there. They're still there. But just to kind of clarify where I'm at in my code, uh, you can do that. But anyways, underneath where void update closes, which if I click in the opening bracket, let me zoom in here, sorry. There we go. Underneath where void update closes, I'm going to add a new function. So I'm going to start typing void on or on on tri there. We're looking for on trigger enter 2D. Must be 2D. What that means is remember this is on the puck. So it's saying when I run into something that is a trigger, do the code here. Right? That's what we want. And it fills in all this stuff. It's looking for a Collider 2D. It's going to name it Collision. Anyways, for right now, we're just going to do a debug.log. And I'm going to say, wall, semicolon. And I'm going to test this and see, does the debug log run when it hits things that are triggers? Well, save it. Go here. Let's run it. Go to my console. It does not. The reason is, not only do you need a box collider, but if you want it to register collisions, you need a rigid body 2D on them. So I highlighted all four walls with a shift click. Add component, start typing ridge, and make sure you get the 2D rigid body. Rigid body 2D. And if I hit play right now, uh, it does register wall, but the walls fell down, and that's because gravity is set to 1, so set that to 0. And now, remember that was for all four of them, now let's run it. Hey, I'll pause it right there. Right there, we've registered 39 trigger collisions with wall. So when they hit the wall that is a trigger, we don't want it to just debug log. We want it to say, hey, your puck speed is now equal to the opposite, which would be just make it negative. So invert it, right? Oops, sorry. Let's go test it. Hey, look at that. And that one I have highlighted, you can see is inverting its speed whenever it hits that. I could even take this wall out. You can see them bouncing there. <clears throat> now if you put the speed up too high, which we can simulate by moving it back and then moving it forward slowly, it corrals them. But if I move too fast, you can see some of them get through. That's because the speed, what the collision didn't have time to register. So, the answer is either slow down the puck or thicken the wall. So if you're having that problem, that's how you fix it.